Okay, so uh, the tool, it really is an excellent tool. I mean, you just hate to go to a, a seminar and you've already paid to get in there and then they upsell you to another $3,000 product and I went, oh my god. I knew I should have left my wallet in my car, you know, but I really feel like this is one of the tools that's going to really help in this tax lien stuff because I'm seriously into this now. So here's a, an example of uh, some download they call a repository. Same thing as over the counter list, so you can just buy these things immediately. Um, you download a spreadsheet from their site, you know, the list, it's all, all the information is there, you've got everything you need. And again, when it's working, you go back and take a look at that tutorial. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the return on the tax leads. Return on investment. 12%, 20% per year. Example, we talked about Indiana, 10% for six months. $300 return, two or three times a year, 30%. That's on the tax lien side. Okay, after going to the tax lien thing, I went to a Jack Bosch seminar on raw land. So here's the other possibility on raw land. You spend three hundred dollars, and you flip it and make three thousand. Okay, so that's that's a real possibility. So here you're looking at spending three thousand and getting three hundred. Here you're looking at spending three hundred and getting three thousand. The only difference between the two, besides some zeros and more money is the big if factor, if you can sell it. So if you want to get stuck with a whole bunch of property that you can't sell, don't do your research and pay way more than you should have. I promise you, you will have property that you'll never get rid of. So uh, the trick on all this stuff, of course, is getting things cheaply enough that you can actually turn around and get rid of it. So here's Jack Bosch, and here's his land profit generator. So I went to his seminar, it was the most recent, and actually he came here and spoke, okay? If you want to go back and see what he had to say, if you weren't listening to his land information and you weren't here a couple months ago, just go back to the blog site, you've got an hour to an hour and a half of him speaking, and he's got a lot of good information. He wasn't supposed to even be here. He had scheduled, you know, an assistant to come out here for too small a venue, not enough people, at the last minute, his speaker got sick, couldn't make it, and he said, oh, what the heck, I haven't been to Santa Barbara. It's one of the nice things about being in Santa Barbara is people look at it like, you know, well, I can have a little vacation while I'm there and write it off. So he came out and he spoke. As we were setting things up and getting it ready, I got a call from my property manager here in Santa Barbara and said, hey, your rental property there off of State Street, the guy who collects the rent, he got 3000 of rent from the other tenants in the place, and he took the 3000 and split out of town, and he's gone. <laughs> and you got to make it, you know, you got a problem on your hands. Well, this was the call, just as I was setting Jack up, and I turned around and looked at Jack, and I said, oh boy, and I told him a story, and he said, well, here, let me tell you something. I've been doing land flipping for 8, 10 years, 12, whatever it's been now, and I've been so successful and made so much money flipping land, but I thought, what the heck, we're at the bottom of the market in Arizona. I think I'm going to go out and get some of these cash flow rentals. When the market comes up, I'll not only have cash flow, but I'm going to have appreciation as well. So I went out and bought about 15 of these properties. <coughs> and immediately, a couple of places, you know, the renters didn't pay. They started trashing the place. I thought it was an anomaly, so I put my staff on it. Take care of it, see what you can do. And it just kept happening. And it kept happening. I'm going to go back and I'm going to sell all those properties, get rid of them, and just stick with land because there's, you know, a lot less problem dealing with land than there is all these rental properties. Well, that was enough for me to go, hmm, maybe there's something I don't need to learn here. Maybe I just need to get out of it, you know. So I, I'm not saying that I would never go back and do rental properties or multi-unit properties, whatever. I just, I don't have a big goal to have 30 or 40. I'd much rather spend the time on the uh, tax liens, deeds, and raw land. Easier, that's all. It's not that you can't make money in this market off of rental properties, you can. But you're going to have to work a lot harder to do it. Okay, his land profit generator is uh, $14.97. I think he's done a great job of 
organize his website because every time you click on one of these things, he comes up with some information. In fact, uh, most of it is uh, videos. So let's go take a quick look at uh, Jack Bosch, Education, Agent. Here you go. So this is online. So this is Jack. There's a long time making a pen. Uh, ready? Number three. Do you have any pets? Are they out the door? Are they out the room? Are they out in the backyard? That would be good too. Okay. So we're logged in there. And every time you go to something, one of these pull down menus, he's got a lot of information that's videos, all kinds of things for teaching you how to do this business. So you pay about $14.97 and you've got this total guide here step you through the process on how to do all this stuff. And, uh, you know, when I went to his uh, seminar, of course they had other people, other speakers there selling other products. And I talked to one of the guys that was there. In fact, we got a little uh, thing I'm going to have you listen to real quick. And he said, you know, you could go spend money on all these other speakers and products, but if you just spend your time on this, it's going to take you a couple of months to really get through everything he's got. You really have everything here you need. There's no sense in going out there and signing up for all this other stuff. You know? And I talked to Jack when I was there as well about the issue of private lending, and he said the same thing that Sean and Tony said. I don't do private lending. I don't go out there and advertise and look for private lenders. I have had in the past a few equity share partners but I'm not seeking private loans from anybody, and after I had enough money from some of my equity share partners, I've been able to continue doing my business without needing other people's money. It's besides that, a lot of the deals that I do are $300 deals. I buy a property for $300 that may have been advertised for $10,000, and people were just saying, you know, I just got to get rid of this thing. Yeah, you can have it for $300. In fact, some people will give it away for free. And then he'll turn around and sell it for a couple thousand, two or three or four thousand. And he does that over and over and over, and it adds up. So one thing he does is he flips the properties real quick. And if he can't flip it real quick, the other thing he'll do is he'll overfinance. He right now has about $60,000 a month coming in on overfinance property. So imagine you buy a property for 300 dollars and it's worth ten thousand, and you tell somebody, okay, we'll we'll owner finance this property. I'll sell it to you for eight thousand because you can get more when you order when you owner finance. And you can't really just flip it. I'll sell it to you for eight thousand. How much can you pay per month? Well, you can pay three hundred a month. Great. Okay, we'll put you down for three hundred a month. The first month they pay, they just paid the price of what he bought the property for, three hundred bucks. Now there's places you can do this very easy, and other places you may not want to do it. For instance, California, as you know, Patrick, is a uh, foreclosure state. You cannot do uh, you cannot do land contracts in California. Illegal. Okay. Nevada, you can do a land contract. So if you get a property for 300 bucks and you want to owner finance it, you do a land co contract with somebody. If you go six months and they pay great and all of a sudden they quit paying, the land contract reverts to a lease and you evict the people like you would if they were tenants on property, but there's nobody living on the property. And guess what's going to happen when they come back to trash the place? Nothing. There's nothing to trash. It's just land, okay? If you do it in California, you actually have to go through a full foreclosure process because you have to do a standard deed and a standard contract, all the stuff in California. So in California, I would flip property, 